Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to talk about how to find the area of the region bounded by the given curves. Okay, so one of the curves, actually this is a straight line, right? As you can see, this is a linear equation. And what about the other one? The other one is a side wave parabola because the square is on the y, it's not on the x. So we have a side wave parabola here. Okay, so what is the first thing that we need to do here? The first thing that we need to do here is to graph the region so that we can set up the integral to compute the area. Okay, so the first thing is that we are going to graph the straight line, right? So the straight line would actually be easy to graph here. Um, so all we need to do is to look at the y-intercept, which is 0, 3. So we plot the point right here quickly, okay? And then now if we look at the slope, which is negative 1, which is negative 1 over 1, so that means we go from the y-intercept, uh, we go down one unit and then go to the right one unit and then we get the other point, right? So actually all we need is our uh, two points to graph a line, right? And so if you want, you can always make more points, but if we're using a line tool right here, then we probably don't need more points, right? But if you're just doing it on paper, then it would be a good idea to just get more points. Okay, so we get the, um, the straight line right here. Now, what about the, the other one? The other one, uh, it would be a good idea to find the intersections before we graph the parabola, okay? So how do we find the intersections? If we want to find the intersections, let me write down the word right here. If we want to find the intersections, usually you, you'll hear people say that we set the two equations equal to each other. Um, that's not really uh, a precise way of saying that. In general, we are basically solving a nonlinear system of equations. So basically, right, what that means is that we are solving this nonlinear system. I think I, I can just use more space right here. Okay. So what are we getting here? One of the equations is y equals 3 minus x right here. Okay, so that's our equation one. What about the other equation? And of course, that will be our parabola, right, as you can see here. So now um, <clears throat> we have a nonlinear system, and our goal here is to find uh, the solutions that will that will satisfy the the, uh, the system. That means we are finding their intersection points. Okay. So uh, what we can do is that we can just use substitution. And how do we make substitution? It's actually simple. So we know that y is already solved for here. It's already isolated. So that means we have y equals three minus x. That means we can plug this 3 minus x into the y and then under the square, okay? So we plug this 3 minus x into this y right here. Okay, so now equation 2, okay, gives us something square equals 5 minus x. I'm basically rewriting equation two, but I'm going to replace the y by this three minus x in here. So we are getting three minus x in here. So now we get a quadratic equation in x. And so how do we solve this equation? We can simply just multiply this out because there is a square right here. So how do we multiply? You got to write it as two copies, right? So you got to write it as like this. So we have three minus x times three minus x. You can FOIL or you can simply use the, uh, there is a formula for expanding a binomial square. It's up to you whichever way works best for you. So if we multiply that out, then we are going to be getting, okay, 9 minus 6x plus x squared. Is that okay? And then now the right-hand side would still just be 5 minus x. And this minus this plus sign looks too ugly here. Let me redraw it. Okay, so now we have this. Then you may say, what do we do next? Let's move all the terms to the left hand side of the equation, right? So let's continue doing the calculation here. We have uh, x squared, so let's write it in descending order. So we have x squared. That's that's what we bring to the front. Okay, and then now there is a negative six x here. We add the x to this side, so we get negative 5x. Okay, there was a 9 here. We moved the 5 over. That means we subtract the 5 from both sides of the equation. So we get 9 minus 5, so we get positive 4. And that's equal to 0. So now what do we do with this quadratic equation here? You can use the quadratic formula, or you can simply just factor this if it's factorable. 
And in fact, this is factorable. So we can factor this. And we are getting, so we can factor it as x times x. So that's how we can get the x squared. There was a 4 here, so we can choose 4 and 1. Okay, so 4 and 1 gives us the 4. And the positive sign in front of the 4 tells us that the signs in here must be the same, right? Either they're both positive or both negative. Now, look at the middle term here. That's a negative 5, so we get negative 4 and negative 1 because that's how we can get the negative 5x, okay? So now, using the zero product property, we can simply just get x equals 4 and then x equals 1. And those are the two points of intersection. What, uh, well, that's only just the x values. What about the y values? We can plug them back into equation one or equation two, it's up to you, uh, to find the y value. But equation one is simpler. So we are just going to plug that back into equation one and find it. So if you put the four back in here, you get three minus four, which is one. So you just get y to be one. Okay, so y is equal to one for this one. Oh, actually it will be like the one, right? Yeah, did I say one? That's kind of bad. Okay, so now if we plug x equals 1 in here, you get 3 minus 1, so we get 2. So y, the corresponding y value is equal to uh, 2. So the points, the two intersection points that we are getting would be 4, negative 1. The other point is 1, 2. And so those are the two points that we have here. We can actually now just plot them on the straight line right now. Why? Because because those are the points where the uh, the line and the parabola crosses, right? So that means those two points must also be on the line. So we get four, right? One, two, three, four, four, and negative one. So we get that here. Okay, so that's this point. This is one intersection point, and the other point is one comma two. So we get one and then two, which is this point right here. So we get the, the other point. Okay, so those are the two intersection points right now. Um, the next thing is really just to graph this parabola right here. There are actually uh, a lot of different ways that you can graph the parabola. Um, the easy way is actually just to base based on its form. Then the easy way is to look at the uh, the transformations. Then that will make things easy. If you don't want to do that, then you can use the formula y equals leg the b over 2a. Yeah, you didn't heard it wrong, right? You didn't hear it wrong. What happened is that um, instead of using x equals leg the b over 2a, you got to use y equals leg the b over 2a. It's really because the um, <clears throat> we are actually writing x as a quadratic function of y, right? So you actually need to switch the variable in this case. So, um, <clears throat> Now, what happens is that we can try to find the vertex by, I will show you another way here. Instead of using the formula, we can simply just reorder the terms in the equation and that will give us something. Let me show you. So what happens is that we look at the second equation right here. Let me just use a different color. Let me just use the right color here. So what happens is that we have y squared is equal to five minus x. Okay, so that's our equation here. And if we, solve for x, then we are going to add x to both sides of the equation, then we get the x on the left side, and then we subtract both sides with the y squared. Actually, let me not skip the steps. So we get x plus y squared is equal to 5. Is that okay? So that's really just adding the x to the side. And then now we subtract the y squared from both sides of the equation, and we get x equals negative y squared plus 5. Okay, so now what does this tell us? Um, what this tells us is this. We, if we look at the basic x equals y squared, okay, we actually have a parabola that's sideways and it opens to the right. Now, if we look at the transformation, oh, by the way, when, it op when we have this one, the vertex is at the origin, okay? Now, look at this one. This minus sign right here means what? We have a parabola that has a horizontal reflection, okay, because that's in front of the y square. So we are going to have a sideway parabola that opens to the left. Basically, we are really just reflecting this graph horizontally, 
about the y-axis, okay? So we do get a sideways parabola that looks like this, okay? We do the reflection. Then you may say, what about this plus five? This plus five is actually telling us that we are going to move in the positive x direction five units. That means we're moving this graph originally right here, five units to the right. So that means our vertex is not at the origin anymore. What, what is our vertex in this case? The vertex now becomes, okay, five, zero. Yeah, why is that? It's really because if our original vertex is at zero, zero, what happened is that if we just move the whole graph five units to the right, that means we are going to F5 to the X value. Okay, so that's why our vertex would be vi uh, phi zero in this case. Okay, so now we can plot the vertex. So five, zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Five, zero is right here. So at this point. Okay, basically we have three points. Remember the parabola will cross. The yellow line at those two blue dots right here so we have three points two points and also the vertex so that's all three points together we can graph the problem um, by using symmetry we can get two more points which will make it easier for us to graph the problem so the line of symmetry is actually the x-axis right here because that's the vertex right so now you also would get a point right here so we get this point here Okay, where's the other point? The other point is right here. Because that's two, this point here is two units away from the line symmetry. So on the other side of the symmetry, you also get another point for the problem. Okay, so now we get five points and that one is a vertex. So it would make it easy for us to graph the problem. So let's do that. And so now we have the problem. Okay, um, it becomes quite obvious what the region looks like. The, the bounded region is actually this region right here. Let me do the shading right here. Yeah. We wanna do the shading over there. So that's the area of the region that we are trying to determine here. Okay, so now how do we figure out this region? Um, so what happened is that we we have to think about whether we got to use x as the variable integration or whether we want to use y as the variable in integration. What that means is that we actually need to think about whether we use a, uh, if we are to set up uh, the Riemann sum, <clears throat> that eventually will turn into the integral when we take the limit what happens is that we want to think about whether we want to use a horizontal strip or a vertical strip. In this case, we actually want to use a horizontal strip. It's really because um, if you just think about the graph, I mean, if you just think about the region, what happens is that um, <clears throat> if you want to use a horizontal strip, what happens is that the right curve, the curve on the right, is actually this right curve right here of the region. It's a unique upper bound that we have right here and then the lower bound is actually just a straight line so we have a unique lower bound in the x direction okay now if you want to use a vertical strip what happened is that you need a um you need to look at the top curve and then the bottom curve here comes the problem do you see what's going on here the top curve looks like that's holding the top curve right here but once you go beyond this point what happened is that this is also part of the parabola right here um i'm not saying that it's not possible to do it it's still possible but it will be more difficult to do it what happened is that if you just look at the region there is for the lower bound on this side right here do you see that there is a yellow uh, straight line right here as the lower bound but once you go past this blue point right here you get a different lower bound so that means when we want to find the area using x as the variable, we actually have to uh, break the region into two. So it's cutting the region right here. I will actually do another video to do that. So for now, we are not going to worry about that. We are just going to use this idea. 
of setting up the integral for the area. So let's just recall right here. Okay, so the area for a region like this is that we have y with the lower bound. We don't know the limits yet, so let's just wait until later to figure the limits. But for now, the idea is like, how do we set up the integrand? The integrand is actually given by the right curve. So basically, we use the right curve in the x direction. So in this case, it would be this parabola right here. Subtract the left curve. Okay, so which is going to be the yellow line right here. And then you have the y. Remember, even though I put x right here, but we are writing x as a function of y. So we are still just having everything in terms of y right here. Okay, so that's the idea for setting up the integral. Okay, um, <clears throat> to set up the integral, we actually need to turn both equations uh, into an equation we as writing x as a function of y, okay? So in that case, we didn't do that for equation 1. We actually have done that for equation 2. So let's rewrite the whole system. So equation 1 actually now becomes... So you add the x to the left side of the equation. So we are going to get x plus y is equal to 3. And then continue to solve for x, we get x equals uh, 3 minus y, right? And so this is actually our uh, the left curve. So x left is equal to 3 minus y here. OK? And then equation two, equation two is actually simple right here. It's basically just that one, right? So we are going to just write it as x, the right curve, and that's equal to negative y squared plus five. And so we are actually now ready to set up the integral. Okay, so we now write the integral. So the area is equal to the integral. Um, so now using the x to the right curve, then we are going to be getting negative y squared plus 5, okay? And then subtract now the yellow straight line, which is this one. So we just get 3 minus y right here. This problem is actually simpler than you think. Um, the reason for why it takes so long for me to explain because I try to explain all the details, it turns out that when you actually do the problem yourself, you may be able to finish this a lot faster. Okay, so now there is one more thing that we need to worry about here, which are the limits that we need to put in, right? Now, what? how do we put the limits? It's actually simple. We know that the uh, the variable of integration is y, right? So in this case, we just look at the smallest y value for the region and the largest y value for the region. So if you look into the y direction, the smallest y value, the lowest point in the region is actually at this point, which has a y value of negative 1. So you just put negative 1 here as the lower limit. And then what about the highest point of the region, which is right here, and it has a y value of 2, so you just put the 2 here. And basically, those two are the two y values that we got from the calculation of the intersections, as you can see here. OK, so now we are ready to do the integration here. And so doing the integration is actually not too bad because they are really just just, um, <clears throat> just power functions right? with some constants. This is basically a polynomial. So we have negative 1 to 2, and then Let's remove the parentheses and combine like terms. So we get negative y squared, right? Okay, what do we get here? We get 5 minus 3, so we get plus 2. Okay, and then we have minus minus, we get plus y, right? Okay, so we get that. And then now it's time to do the integration, so integrate. So what do we get here? Um, we get negative 1 over 3, y to the third power, right? And then plus 2y. And then plus y, well, 1 over 2y squared, negative 1 to 2. 
Okay, so now the rest is really just using the fundamental theorem of calculus, plug the, uh, the two in there, plug the negative one in there, and then do the calculation. So what do we have here? If we plug the two in there, two cubed is eight, so negative eight over three. And then plug the two in here, plus four. Plug the two in there, that's four over two, so that's two. Subtract. Okay, don't forget to put in parentheses. Now plug in the negative one in there. We get negative one to the third power. That's negative one times negative one over three. That's positive one over three. And then uh, minus two, right? You plug the negative one times two, negative two. Plug the negative one square. I mean, plug the negative one into the y square. So we get positive one. So we get positive one half. So now. Let's do the calculation here. Make sure that you pay attention to the sign change, right? So negative eight over three minus one over three. So we get nine, right? Over three. So we get three, negative three. Is that okay? So we are, um, I'm just combining the fractions with the same denominator to make the calculation easier. Okay, so we get the, uh, the integers right now. So the whole numbers, we have four plus two, we get six minus minus two so six plus two which is eight okay lastly we get minus one over two right minus with the positive one half so minus one over two so minus one over two which would give us okay now let's do the calculation so eight minus three that's five five minus 0.5 right 4.5 which is nine over two or 4.5 if you want a decimal Okay, so that's how we can get um, the answer here. But the calculation is not really our major focus right here. Our focus is really just the setup of the integral because I think that's the that the <clears throat> that's the most difficult part. Because usually once you finish setting it up, um, the integration shouldn't be too bad, right? It's just routine work with the integration. The setup part is the part that you need to worry about more. Um, you need to know how to set up the integrand, and also we need to uh, put in the the limits of integration, right? That's usually the difficult part because it must be based on the region that you that you see, so that you can put in the right information. Okay, so that's it for this problem. What I would do next time is that we are going to uh, talk about the same problem, but I'm going to integrate with respect to x. Okay, so stay tuned for that video. To help make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support to make more videos. I want to work together with you to help students and children learn math more easily. Okay, so thank you for watching. 